Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am Edwin Hernandez, Grasshopper Specialist at Shape Diver. In today's video, we will finish up our table configurator model by uploading it to Shape Diver and changing some settings that the Shape Diver platform offers, such as general settings, environmental settings, lighting settings, camera settings, and also reorganizing or renaming our parameters that come from Grasshopper. Before we get started, remember to subscribe and to like this video as it really helps our channel. And if you want to find out more about what you can do with ShipDiver, make sure to check our website. So let's get started. Here we have the final definition of our table configurator model with all the steps that we covered in the previous videos. If you haven't seen those videos, you can go to our channel and you will find a complete series where we explain how to create this definition. You can also download this definition in the description. Right now we will upload this definition to ShipDiver. So we can come to app.shipdiver.com. This is our platform. And here you can find some featured models that our users have created. If you go to menu, and you go to Browse Models, you can find all the public models that our users have uploaded to ShipDiver. In order to upload our model, we need to log in our account. If you don't have an account yet, you can register, it takes a few minutes to do so. In this case, we will log in and I will show you how easy it is to upload Grasshopper definitions to ShipDiver. Here we are in our profile page where we can find our public models, private models, pending models, etc. To upload our models, we can go to the left side and here we have the upload button. Or you can also click on account and here you can also click on upload. In the upload page, you can first of all find some relevant links like the documentation link where you can find all our documentation if you have any questions regarding ShapeDiver. Or also our forum link where you can ask us questions if you have any problems while uploading your definition or if you want to share any other concern with all the users of ShapeDiver. To upload the model, we just have to drag and drop our file. So here we have our file, table tutorial master file. We drag it into the upload box, we drop it, and that's it. We have uploaded our model. Now we just have to give it a name. You can also put a description, enter some tags if you want your model to be found easily. You can go to next. Here we can copy the model settings of previous models that we have uploaded. So if you want some lighting settings, camera settings, or any other settings that you created with a previous model uploaded to ShipDiver, you can find your model here, and then those settings will be copied into your current definition. And here you can enter some domains where your definition will be allowed to be embedded. This section is just available for pro users. Then we go to publish. Our servers will process your model and we'll find out if there is any issues with your model, maybe delete some unsupported plugins or any other problems that the model may have. Like for example, if you have custom scripts, so C Sharp scripts or Python scripts, those scripts have to be manually checked by us and you will be notified when your custom scripts are checked. Here we are now in our edit page. So we can see now our model, our table model. So this one is the same table model that we saw here in our definition. Here we don't see the materials because we are using the simple material component of the ShipDiver plugin which offers some materials that are in our database. So when you upload a model with those simple materials, you can then see those materials reflected in the ShipDiver platform. So here, for example, we have a glass material and a wooden material. And now in the left side, we can see all the settings of our model and in the right side, we can see all the parameters of our model. So if we go to the left side in our settings, we have different tabs. This first one is the general one, where you can set if you want shadows to be shown. So if we turn this off, then of course we don't see any shadows. If we want some ambient occlusion, so the ambient occlusion allows to create an additional shadow in the edges of the model so that it looks more realistic. So you can also turn it on or off. Then we have the bump amplitude. That's if you have uploaded a material which contains a bump map then we have the ground plane, so for example if we turn off the ground plane here, of course our shadow disappears because it doesn't have a ground where to cast. So we can turn it on again because we want to see our shadow. Then we have the grid, this is just if you want to have some kind of reference for the sizing of your table. Then we have point size, that means if you have points in your grasshopper definition that need to be displayed, then these points get displayed as volumes in our viewer. 
Therefore, here you can set how big those volumes that represent the points are. Then we have the default material color, that means anything that you haven't set a material to in Grasshopper will use this default material color. And finally, we have parameter validation. If you turn that on, that means that we will get these additional buttons down the parameter section that say apply or cancel. These are so that you can change different parameters in your parameter list and the model won't change until you click on apply. So for example, if I change table width to 700 and then we change table height to 600, as you can see, our table hasn't changed, but we can see that our parameters have changed to a blue color, which means that they are not updated with the model. Then we can click on apply and then these two parameters will be sent at the same time to be changed in our grasshopper definition. So now we have a table height of 600 and a table width of 700. If you have parameter validation turned off, that means that any change that I do in my parameters will change the model automatically. So if I go to 600 in my table width, then this will change automatically in my model and I don't have to click on apply. The same happens here. If I go back to 500, then that will change automatically in my model. We can go to the next tab. The next tab is the lighting tab. In this section, you can change, add, or remove lighting that affects the way the table gets rendered. So here, for example, we have two directional lights that are represented by these arrows, and we have also an ambient light. So if we click on the ambient light, we can see the different settings that our light contains. So it has a color, so we can change the color to any color that you want, and it has an intensity. So we can change the intensity and see how that reflects in the way our table gets rendered. So of course here the intensity is too high, then the reflection of our material is too much and it doesn't look good. So we can go back to a 0 0.5, 0 0.8. So you can play with these parameters and decide what's the best for your model. We can go to the next one, directional. So here we get a point that we can move and directly affect the direction of our directional light. We can also change the color and the intensity. The same happens with our directional light too. And actually, these ones also can cast shadow, so you can turn on or off whether this light is casting shadow. So here, for example, we have already two lights, directional lights casting shadow. Then, of course, we get two shadows projected in our model. You can then add more lights. We have different kind of lights, ambient light, directional light, hemisphere light, point light, spotlight, flashlight. So you can tweak all of these type of lights and see how to get the perfect setup for your specific model. Then you can also give a name to your light and then go to save. Don't forget, after you have made any change in your light scene, you have to click on save light scene. Otherwise, this change won't get saved. So you can come here, give it a name, go to save. And in this way, you can also save different light scenes that you can change here in the last option of our lighting settings. So if we go to default, for example, we can see how it looks. If we go to legacy, we can see the different changes in the way our model is being rendered. If we go to the next one, scene one, etc. So the way our lighting is projected in the model gets saved based on these light scenes. Let's go to the next tab, that's the environment tab. Here we can change the background color, so we can change this. We can also change the background alpha. So for example, if you're going to embed this model, in any other website and you want to have some background in this model, then you can have the background alpha to zero and that means that everything that is behind this model will be seen. The next option is to show environment. Here we have different options of environments that you can use. So level Z, we have ocean, we have different ones that you can use and you can see it projected in your model. You can also change the resolution of this background. Remember that this environment has to be also loaded by the browser. So if you can keep the resolution low, it's better so that your model loads faster. But you can also, of course, bring the resolution up if you think that this won't generate any problems of performance. This environment is also used in the reflections of your model. So for example, if you have a material that has low opacity or high metalness, then all the reflections that get this material is the reflection of this environment map. And finally, we have the custom environment. So you can actually have your own environments. 
If you want to learn more about how to set your own environments, you can go to our support page. And here you can find all the documentation about how to add these custom environments to your model. Mainly you will need your image in a cube map format. So here we have the original image and we have to convert this image in a cube map format. To do so, we offer a website where you can upload your image and we give you back this cube map that you can use then as your custom environment. Let's go to the next tab, which is the camera tab. The first option that we have here is the camera type. So we are right now in perspective view, but we also support orthographic views. So for example, if you want to create not a 3D application, but a 2D application, you could, instead of using the perspective camera type, you can go, for example, to the top view. And this means that our camera will be an orthographic camera, which will be always looking to the top. So I can no longer tweak my camera to look at the model in any other angles, but from the top. So you can also do the same for the other one. So we have the bottom camera, the right camera. And in this way, you can get the different views of your model, but using an orthographic camera. The next option is the field of view. The field of view changes the angle in which our camera is showing our model. So if we are at 45 degrees, that means that our camera is showing everything that can be seen in a 45 degrees angle. If we increase this angle, that means that we will be able to see more and more to the sides of our camera. So if we go to the 90 degrees, for example, we can see that our camera angle is wider and therefore we can see more to the sides of our model. And we can also do the opposite and go to the lowest, that is 10. And of course, that shows less and less of our model because we are decreasing the angle in which our camera is showing our model. The next option is to disable zoom. So very simple, if you disable zoom, that means you won't be able to zoom anymore. The next option is the zoom speed, so how fast our zoom reacts. The next option is to disable pan. So to pan is to move to the sides of the camera. So you right click and you can pan in your model. But if you want, you can disable this behavior so that your users, for example, just can move around the model, but not to the side. So if I go disable pan, that means that if I go right click, I cannot move anymore anywhere. But if I go left click, I can still rotate around my model and I can also zoom in and out. Next option is pan speed, then rotation speed, key pan speed, then we have disable key pan, Key pan, that means that you can actually use your keyboard and use the arrows of your keyboard to move to the sides of your scene. So for example, if I enable again my key pan and I use my arrows, I can actually move around my model without using the mouse, but using the keyboard. The next option is to do auto rotation. So for example, if we want our model to be showcased, so we can give a little bit of auto rotation and then our model will start to rotate without moving any key or any mouse. The next option is disable rotation, which means I'm no longer able to rotate my model. The next option is dumping factor. This factor sets how smooth our camera is after you release it. So that means if I start the camera movement and then I release my camera movement, then there is a little bit of smoothness after the release. If I go to one, which is the maximum, and I start to move my camera and then I release it, then the camera stops immediately after I release it. But if I set it to the minimum, which is zero, and then I start again to move my camera, when I release it, then the camera continues moving for a little bit more to give a little bit of a smoothness to the movement of the camera. The next option is zoom factor. This sets how far or how close our zoom is from the bounding box of an object. So here, if we click on this camera in the top of our viewer, this will center our camera in the bounding box of our model. If we set the zoom factor to, for example, two, that means it will be twice as far from the bounding box of our model. The same happens if we do the opposite. So if we go to 0.5, this means our camera will be closer to the bounding box of our model. The default, of course, is one, because that means all of our model will be visible when we reset our camera. The next option is camera adjust. If we set this to true, that means that anytime a parameter gets changed, 
our camera will zoom to the result of the parameters change. So for example, if we make our model bigger, so our table could be a thousand units of width, then our camera will adjust to this new size. Let's make our table a bit bigger, so we go to 2000 for example. Then we can see how our camera automatically adjusts to the size of our new model. This camera adjust is linked to the next option which is adjust duration. This means how long it takes to the camera to adjust to the new size. So this is in milliseconds, so this is less of a second. If we go to 1000 that means that's one second and that's the time that our camera will take to adjust to this new size. The next option is camera revert. So there is always a default camera position in our scene. And if we have this camera revert turned on, that means that if I start moving my model and then I release my camera, then my camera will go back to my default view. This also gets linked with the next option, which is revert duration which means how long does it take before our camera goes back to the original position. So if we increase this to, for example, two seconds, so 2000 milliseconds, and we start to move our camera and then we release, our camera will take two seconds to go back to our original location. We have covered here all of our settings, of our viewer settings. So the general, the lighting, the environment, and the camera settings. And now we have in the right side the parameter settings, which are quite simple. We have three things that we can do with our parameters. We can hide them. So if we click on this icon, this means that our parameter will be hidden to the public. So if we go to apply settings, then this parameter will no longer be shown to the final users. The next option is to move our parameter around so we can change the order of our parameters. So here we click in this icon and then we we'll drag. We can drag our parameters up and down and then reorder the way our parameters get shown to the final user. So for example, if we want first the table length, the table height and the table width to be displayed, then we can move all of these parameters up in our list and everything else we're going to start to move down depending on our needs. And the final thing that we can do with our parameter is to change its name. So this name comes from Grasshopper, so table height that means that in Grasshopper, I set this slider to table height as name. However, if you also want to change the name here in ShapeDiver, you can do it. So for example, here I could add to my name the units that I'm using so that the user knows that this table height is in millimeters, so it's 500 millimeters. And actually, there is a last thing that you can do with the parameters, that is to set the default. So for example, here we have 500. 1000, 2000, etc. This value is the one that will be used to display the default model that gets shown in our viewer. After you have made all of these changes in your viewer settings and in your model parameters, you can click on apply settings and all of these that you have changed here will be saved. Finally, what we see here is the public page of our Grasshopper definition, which then you can share with anybody or embed in any other website. And that's all for this tutorial and for this series of our table configurator. We have created our table, we have optimized it, we have applied materials, and finally we have uploaded our definition to ShapeTab. I hope you learned something new today, and if you like this video, please click on the like button, and if you don't want to miss any other video of our channel, please subscribe, and see you in the next one.